All right, y'all, back in another video, back in another reaction. We got some flight. What happens to your body if you live one year in Antarctica? Now, we got some late night homework, late night summer school homework with our teacher, Flight. Hey, true. FTC. Happens to you in Antarctica. It's June. We got some so fresh, clean, clean education on this. It's summer for some of you guys. But we got so fresh, clean, clean education list for the guys in summer school. All right? I ain't never so, had summer school. How would it feel like if you spent about, Not okay, enough. 14 months, I say, is about two years in Antarctica? Flight, what did you just say to me, Flight? So, what how would it say? feel like if you spent about, okay, 14 months, I say, is about two years in Antarctica? What will happen here? That's why Flight took that long pause, because he know he's not right for that. Brain. He know he not. We're going to find out. By riddle. The bigger the brain, so check it out. the smarter the person. But the brain of no, the Einstein so weighs only about learn. 1.2 kilograms or 2.6 pounds, which is less than average. Even though it's summer, taking the knowledge... The administrators can't do much if you got your electronics out. They're just going to look at you like, well, you'll probably be back here again next year, but make yourself a good example. Take about 15 minutes to learn some things, man. Flight, you know you never did this in school. So I don't even know how you're saying this out loud. iPhones, Androids, tablets, line wires, pagers away for 15 minutes and enjoy. The most viable educational issue. These teachers will never teach you. By contrast, the person who had the largest recorded brain at 2.85 kilograms or 6.28 pounds was diagnosed with delayed development. This most mysterious of human organs never stops surprising, and researchers never stop searching for the boundaries of what the human brain is capable of. So, how might long-term exposure to extreme conditions of isolation and low temperatures affect an adult's brain and even their entire body? Eight scientists and one cook who participated in an Antarctic expedition have first-hand knowledge of these effects. Five really? men and four women spent 14 Five months minutes. at a German research station called Neumeier III. They went almost completely without personal space and contacts with the outside world. Damn. This social isolation and monotonous environment. What did is you the say? Closest thing on Earth. Monotonous. To space exploring. No. Flight. Flight don't know what that word is. Oh, I'm this song to learn. This ingenious monotonous. Desert at the beginning. But then watch. It's That's going to be Flight's new song name. Says monotonous. Alexander if you don't even know what that means. His investigation. Well, at the you going to use that in the next song, watch. Monotonous. In cooperation with Professor Dr. Simon Kuhn of the Max Planck Institute for Human Development, they agreed to determine whether an Antarctic expedition <laughs> had an impact on the structure and functioning of the human brain. Animal studies have revealed that similar conditions can harm the hippocampus, a brain area crucial Yellow for memory and navigation. Yeah, Rats are better at learning when the animals are housed with companions or in an enriched yeah, environment that that. than when alone or in a bare, empty cage. But whether this was true for a human's brain was unknown. Other scientists joined the group in the summer. However, before that, the team had to survive alone in the long darkness of the polar winter with temperatures of minus 50 degrees Celsius, that's minus 58 Fahrenheit, when evacuation and deliveries of food and equipment are impossible. Before, during, and after their mission, the participants completed computer-based tests evaluating concentration, memory, cognitive reaction time, and spatial thinking. Regular blood tests were carried out to measure levels of the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, really? BDNF, a protein responsible for promoting the growth of nerve cells and synapses in the brain. What? The researchers used magnetic resonance imaging to determine changes in brain volume, and specifically in the hippocampus in eight of the participants. Uh, it's what? Only 
the hippocampus, hippocampus that supports the growth of new what neurons. Is that? A, a group of nine control participants matched for age and gender to the others, the and who didn't stay at the station underwent identical tests. Measurements on the polar explorers revealed changes in the hippocampus area called the dentate gyrus, which volume was 7.2% smaller on average compared to the analogous area in the control group. This shrinkage correlated with the results of the cognition tests, which showed effects on both spatial abilities and selective attention, which is necessary to ignore irrelevant information. Repeated testing is normally associated with improvements in test results. The learning effect, however, was reduced in the participants who underwent the tests. Those changes were also associated with a drop in BDNF levels. The hippocampus is highly vulnerable to stressors like isolation, Stan says, but it's also very responsive to stimulation that comes from social interactions and a variety of landscapes to explore. Really? Therefore, there are good... Chromebooks are seriously... Are y'all learning something? Up, right out of the box. Because I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm zoning out of this video. Game. All your files are right there. I'm like all now over get the place. Because you're good to go. Switch to setting up the easy way. Switch to Chromebook. The reasons to believe that this change is reversible. However, there have been no indications of that so far. The BDNF levels in the Polar Explorers dropped below the initially recorded level after just three months in Antarctica, and even a month and a half after they returned home. This level did not recover to normal. Ooh. The good news is that the brain can perfectly adapt by compensating for the loss of even a significant chunk of it. Neuroscientists from the California Institute of Technology, or Caltech, examined six people between 20 and 30 years old who had had half of their brain removed in childhood due to severe epilepsy. Uh. Their brain activity was in many respects similar to the brain functioning of healthy people since the remaining half of their brains compensated for the loss of the missing half's computing resources. Given the small number of participants, these results should be viewed with caution. Still, it may be concluded, and this is supported by initial findings in rodents, that extreme environmental conditions can have an adverse effect on the brain. As a next step, the researchers plan to study whether or not physical exercise might be able to help protect against the observed changes in the brain. And what about adaptation effects to extreme conditions on the human body and psyche? The organizers of another Antarctic expedition from Kazakhstan addressed this problem. True, this expedition lasted only 11 days. Assessments of physical condition were carried out only every three days. That is, four times in the participants whose average age was 29 years old. On day one of the expedition, the polar explorers demonstrated a high level of interest and tension due to their expectations and first experience in Antarctica. Then, their interest dropped due to the monotonous landscape and wow. repetitious daytime activities. But the tension contributed to their being mobile, thus helping to quickly involve their bodies in adapting to the environment. So basically their brain shrinks during a certain period of time. You stand in there for a minute. It makes plenty of sense, because don't you think about it like, if you put like, Something like that squishy that usually explodes and you put it in a freezer, it shrinks because of the cold and the temperature and shit. Blood pressure due to adaptation of like their cardiovascular know. systems but and their psycho-emotional state. That's From the next life. day, these indicators steadily Their observation decline. reacts. Their heart rates decreased sharply and remained at that level for the rest of the period of their stay, mm -hmm. with the frequency of their breaths decreasing at a constant and consistent rate. Ah. Their emotional state began to improve upon that turning point. And towards the end of the expedition, it approached the previous maximum value that had been recorded on day one. From day five, when cold, wind, physical activities for eight to ten hours a day and two meals per day became routine, the crew members' indicators stabilized. It was crucial during this critical period yeah, I'm to establish to a favorable next. atmosphere within the group 
between the people game. who didn't know each yeah, other. But this task turned out to be the most difficult. Relative comfort in communication was achieved only on the last day of the expedition when the team reached the South Pole. And if the mission had continued, the psychological indicators could have gotten even worse. And what are the effects of cold and loneliness? Animal tests demonstrated that rodents became aggressive, exposed to a constant fear. They showed an inadequate response to threats if isolated for at least two weeks. This state is accompanied by accumulation of tachykinin peptides in the rodent's brain. When experimenters block these peptides, no negative effect of isolation on the rodent's psyche could be detected. Similar substances have been found in the human brain, so the results of the experiment may help in the future treatment of some mental illnesses. Our body fights against cold until the very end. When our body temperature drops to between 35 and 32 Celsius, or 95 and 89.6 Fahrenheit, blood vessels constrict first, limiting the flow of hot blood to the limbs, thus reserving it for the heart and brain. Ah. Next, the hairs on the body stand up, emulating something like a heat-insulating fur coat. Next, a person starts shivering violently, experiencing convulsions as muscle fibers contract uncontrollably in an attempt to warm the body. When the shivering stops, which increases five-fold the body's ability to raise its own temperature, oh, the blood from the dilated vessels flows to the extremities, producing a sensation of heat. When the temperature drops to between 30.5 and 29.5 Celsius, or 86.9 and 85.1 Fahrenheit, the person falls into a coma. Their heart stops, followed by death, of the brain oh, from oxygen oh, starvation. No. However, the processes of dying are so slow in the cold that if rescued, it helps doctors to bring frozen people back from death. So how would you deal with changes in your brain if you found yourself in extreme conditions? Leave your thoughts. Well, Dr. Reaction has superpowers, so like this video, then give it a thumbs Yeah, Flight could live there for like I another said? 20 years. Anyways, let's turn off this video, Educational Reacts. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see y'all.